Hi there. This is the first in a series of videos that I want to make on Qigong foundations. So I want to include the stuff that I wish somebody had told me sooner. I know a lot of people, you know, are doing Qigong from YouTube right now because there's no teachers around and if you don't have a teacher, you don't have a traditional practice. These videos really don't give you much of a clue in how to how to really practice. I mean, yeah, you, you get to copy movements and you get to, so occasionally you get to hear people say really good things. There's some really good teachers on YouTube, but there's also many teachers on YouTube who teach in a more imaginative, imagination-based way, which doesn't necessarily create the flow of energy in the body and open the pathways. And I know this for a fact because for many years my practice was imaginary. I imagined that I was, you know, circulating chi. And I know now when the chi starts to circulate, you understand that this is not particularly subtle. Okay, everybody talks about, oh, it's subtle. Well, it's not particularly subtle when the chi actually starts to develop. Now, this takes a long time. Fortunately, along the way, the benefits start to accrue because you become more relaxed. You become more connected to your body. But often, people start from a place of thinking they see something and thinking they know what's happening. So the first thing that's important to understand is that Everything in Qigong is an exploration of what is happening now in your body, how you move, where the movement originates from, how the energy flows in the body. So it's not just a matter of copying a movement. It's a matter of understanding that movement and why we're moving that way. And this is really important when you do a traditional form and you do it all the time. <clears throat> and you do the same practice repeatedly and these traditional forms are meant to be done for a long period of time, you know, years. So, but I try to teach foundational movement. I try to teach a foundational approach so that your body can accept these forms and you have a little better understanding because many teachers, you know, even great teachers, they don't always explain things in a way that I could I could learn them. So once I discovered them, you know, and I and and once I found, you know, an amazing teacher, I I started to understand how important it was to feel these you know these these points in the body that where that, that are like landmarks so that so that we know what's happening, we know what where to focus, we need to know where the energy is stuck, we need to know wherever the stiffness is, is where the energy is stuck. But when we move slowly, then we're faced with the places where the movement isn't smooth. So the first thing that it's important to learn is standing. Standing is really the beginning of this. You know, if you're going to have a real practice, you have to understand how to stand. And Wuji, there's so many, I've heard so many different descriptions of Wuji and how you're supposed to practice Wuji and what Wuji is that I just, I finally have boiled this down to an understanding based on, you know, based on things from different teachers, but they, they all make sense when you put them together and then feeling the sense of balance and the sense of relaxation in the body as I was standing. So, so we, when we start, you know, there's, we don't feel anything. And so coming to a point where we can actually feel, we have to have some guidelines in order to find these feelings, especially, you know, we sit in chairs all the time. We, our energy is stuck. We're not connected to our bodies. We're connected to our heads. So we have to stop thinking that we know how to do something and figure out how to do it as though we're infants and we don't, we've never had a body before and we're learning to use this body from a fresh place. 
This is important. You, yoga, the same thing works, you know, if you're doing, if you're practicing yoga. Whatever you're doing, it's not enough to think that you know that your movement is the movement that is healing for your body or that will open up the energy because if the energy is not open and you're doing the movement based on, on what you think you know, you, you keep doing the same thing, you keep getting the same results, right? And somehow we keep doing this. And I, I, I got to say that personally I did this for years and didn't realize that the only thing that was connecting was my imagination. So now I want to talk about Wuji. Wuji is a relaxed stance. It is the foundational stance, the foundational position that we come back to. And, and I try to make it simple actually, but it starts with this understanding of where your center of gravity is. So if you're standing like this, right, your center of gravity is up here somewhere. So you have tension, you have a, also, this isn't very stable. You're very, you're tippy, right? If you're like this, where's your, your center of gravity is some amorphous place around in your back. What, where, where's the weight, you know, if you're, if you're hunched? If you're carrying your head forward, the head is very heavy. There's a lot of, you know, God knows there's a lot of tutorials out there about, about your posture and your neck. And I just, I want to take this in a more organic fashion. So first of all, just, just feel how you are naturally. And then we can start to look at what's going on. So without looking at your feet, can you make them parallel? Don't look. Without looking at your feet, can you make them parallel? And now you look and notice if your feet are like this. Notice if your feet are like this. Notice if your knees are going in, right? And, the, and so you're, you're sinking down into your arch. Notice if you're on the outsides of your feet. Notice if the weight is shifted to one side so that there's weight on the inside of one foot and the outside of the other foot. It's important to understand where you are, right? So where is the center of gravity? Now, if we bring the center of gravity low, everybody talks about Dantian, but I like to think of the center of gravity, which is in the center of your body, just below the navel, right? So in order to lower your center of gravity there, the knees have to be soft. I'm not gonna say the knees have to be bent, they have to be soft. At times we straighten the knees because if we don't straighten the knees, we can't stretch our groins. So just in the course of doing this, there's the, the rules are not hard and fast. The rules are guidelines for how we stand and how we move. It's important, for instance, to have your chest relaxed, but relaxed doesn't mean that you're hunched over. We try to throw our shoulders back because somebody told us that that's good posture, but that's not natural either. So Wuji is a very natural way to stand that creates space in the body and allows the energy of heaven and earth to circulate because we're the bridge between heaven and earth and it involves releasing the spine. So the first thing that you have to do before you do any Qigong is to do a warm up. So this warm-up should include some joint movements, some loosening exercises. I'm going to make other videos about warming up and, and exercises that prepare the body for changing the energy so that the body accepts this new energy and you don't have to do it intellectually, right? Because it's impossible to experience while you're thinking. So you have to let go of all of the thinking and just be in your experience to be successful, right? Which means that we have to open to whatever's going on. So the basic points of Wuji, the weight should be towards the balls of your feet. Now, if you think, just don't look, but think about your feet and think of the space between your, and this is hard, some people aren't connected to their body at all, between their big toe and their second toe, 
And you take that space between those toes and go all the way up into your foot near the bone. Right, this is the liver three acupuncture point. So liver three is the first guideline. If you can feel liver three as though you have roots growing down from liver three. Liver three is the wood element. We're going to create a root just by softening liver three and feeling it go through your foot, not by imagining roots, but by actually allowing the foot to soften and for that point to sink in, even though it's on the top of the foot, that point needs to sink down into the earth. And this creates upward moving energy from the earth that opens up space in your body. So this is the first place that we connect. The next place that we connect is in the qua. So liver 12, these points are up at the very top of the V of the inguinal area in your body. So the top of the V, your bikini line, right where the crease ends, and it'll be directly underneath your nipples. Okay, so this is the liver 12 point. So if we relax liver 12, we free our tailbone and we can then gently, gradually pull the tailbone towards the heel. And notice that this softens your low back. So nothing in your spine can be open, nothing in your body can be open until this inguinal area is open. And notice that I can do this and I'm not doing it from the ankle. So my, my feet aren't moving and my knees aren't moving. I'm just gently turning in here this frees your sacrum, this frees your tailbone. Over time, a lot of us are really stuck there. A lot of us are really stuck here. We don't have the internal and external rotation because we sit in chairs and we don't use it. So this is the next most important place to free, okay? So the, the movement, all of our movement comes from here. We can stretch this area open and we can sink down. And it all comes from here in the tailbone. Still, we want to point toward the heel. The spine needs to work with traction. And you want to release your glutes. So you, it's very hard for people to release their glutes. But your sacrum won't be free until you can release your glutes. Because if you squeeze your glutes, you get, you get this, right? You get the tailbone tucked under and you get this. And this is what a lot of people do. I, I've taught group classes with beginners for a while and I notice that people, they'll stand on their heels and they'll tuck their tailbone under and they're not really getting anywhere. They're locked up there and it's hard to get them to break that. So if you use these points, you don't get locked up there and you work on relaxing your glutes because it'll make everything in your practice easier if you do that. I have space here I want to make sure that my spine is in traction so my head wants to lift. So this, these points right here, these Genji points, these gall, gallbladder one, right, need to be f as far away from your ears as you can. So this puts the head in a position where the chin is level. So it's like you're looking under the brim of a huge hat looking into the distance. And this is, puts your neck in the right position to straighten your spine, lengthen your spine, lengthen your neck, and create space in your body. So this also opens up your forehead for the energy, for that third eye energy, so, so that we can actually use the third eye as a window. This comes much later in your development. But we start working on this stuff almost you know, immediately. The other thing that's important is, so the shoulders want to be down to the side. Relaxed, relaxed, relaxed. 
with some energy in the elbows. Now, what's going on in your chest? So if you bring your shoulders out to the side, perhaps your chest is sticking up. But you want to take this point right here and relax it. It does not going to move much. You just want to relax this point. This helps with all the tension that we hold in our tongue and our throat, all the like unsaid words and you know, all the miscommunication and all of the stuff that gets stuck in our tongue and our throat, all of that energy that gets stuck there, right? We, we want to take that energy and relax this point here. And this allows our chest to very slightly sink down. So the shoulders, you want to be able to have your shoulders in line with your hips, right? So the shoulders are hanging directly over the hips. They're not ahead of the hips. They're not behind the hips. You feel the weight of the shoulders in your feet. So if you lift up your shoulders and do that, you feel your shoulders in your feet. Now there's energy in the elbows. It's not like that, right? But it's like that. So there's a connection between your low back and the rotation of your arms. So you can, just a slight rotation, even more slight than that, you can feel your low back. So we have very few points now. We have the liver three in the feet. We have liver 12 in the inguinal area. We have this point, which is sunk down. The shoulders down to the sides, relax. The elbows, just, ener just a little bit of energy in the elbows. The chin level, looking in the distance. So it's important to not practice with your eyes closed. It's important to relax the, the, the tension on your forehead. And, and keep your eyes open and soft so that you're inside and outside at the same time. And you start to gain awareness. And if you do this for a little while every day, you'll notice that it takes about 10 minutes for the flesh to relax. So the flesh wants to hang on the bones. So this is what the classics say, the flesh hangs on the bones. Relaxation isn't collapse. Relaxation is energized so that there's energy flowing so that you feel good. You don't feel good when you're collapsed. It's like, okay, I might as well just like leave here now. So notice that as you connect to liver three and feel liver 12, you can feel the energy. It really, I think really early in your development, you can start to feel this energy coming up, coming up through your legs, right? And you can start to feel how the connection between your elbows and your low back. I hope you like this video. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I'm doing a lot of hour long classes. I'm gonna start doing these shorter videos with a little more explanation and a little more detail. And, um, and if you wanna support my work, there will be links that you can donate below. So have a great day wherever you are and, um, and I'll see you soon with another video. Thank you.